that the lady on reception, she said seven. So uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe that's maybe that's a new system of uh, accounting that have been adopted by uh, the ministry, and all members of staff have to abide by it. Unable to talk to a politician, I turned to the fishermen. Luckily, fishermen weren't so slippery to catch. I cornered Phil, a spokesman for the UK fishing industry, on the roof of the BBC. We're fishing too much. There's not much fish left in the sea. People are telling me that uh, the fish are all going to run out. Our whole fishing fleet's going to be unemployed. What can we do about it? We can take a reality check because it's not that bad. Isn't it? Uh, no. If you look at the figures that come from the United Nations globally, they will show you that despite everything we've thrown at the world's fish stocks, still of the 523 stocks that they assess, 75% of them are either giving their maximum sustainable yield or could give more. That's actually quite a good record. In the world, though, but, I mean, we're talking about the EU, where 88% of, of stocks are overfished, aren't they? So, I mean, that's... that's a bit that of doesn't a... always mean they're depleted. So, they may be But overfished sounds quite bad. It sounds like you, you're taking more than can effectively that's, replenish that's correct. itself. That's, that's right. We, we haven't managed fisheries well. And, in fact, it's only in the last 10 years or so that we've learned how to manage fisheries better. I mean, we, look, looking at the actual quota system, scientists say one figure, and then the politicians set a figure that's 50% higher. It's no good for anybody. It's no good for fishermen. In the short term, maybe they'll make a few more quid. But it's no long-term solution, and we do need to get a full political commitment to respecting scientific advice, because it's, it's, a, it's a major failing of the common fisheries policy over the years. But I think that we have the, the will and the capability of, of managing our fish stocks for the future. Our fisheries minister had been in touch. He agreed with the fishman. The maths had been all wrong. While I read you some of the statement Hughes people sent me, take this opportunity to see if you too can count like a politician. Incidentally, there's a picture of Hugh behind my fish. We recognise that member states negotiating each year to determine the total allowable catch is not a good way to manage fish stocks, and short-term influencers have contributed to current poor stock levels. Ministers must also consider the socio-economic impact in setting quotas to ensure that fisheries are managed to provide for both the long-term sustainable exploitation of fish stocks and the future economic viability of the fishing industry. We believe the best way forward is having long-term management plans in place to achieve the maximum sustainable yield. It sounded good. Unfortunately, nothing is actually going to happen until 2012. Maybe by then there'll be so few fish left, they'll find them easier to count. Then I heard about a huge stockpile of seafood on the other side of the world that it seemed no one wanted to eat. By the magic of television, we leap forward 12 hours. I'd arrived in Japan, the world's most fish-obsessed country, which has the world's biggest fish market, full of the world's oddest fish. Look at that thing! <laughs> it's like stuck in the corner, can't move forwards, can't move backwards. Oh, gee. And the average Japanese person fills their belly with more fish than anyone else, which made it all the more surprising that they apparently had tons of fish going to waste. Well, technically, it wasn't fish at all. It was whale meat. But if fish disappear, whales may be the only seafood we have left. This is uh, whale meat. Wow. Beautiful. Look like a human, right? Pardon? Tastes like human, right? Yeah, I don't, I've never eaten human, so I don't know. Now, because some whales are facing extinction and don't die very nicely, most of the world has agreed not to kill them, but the Japanese have found an ingenious loophole. They found out that they were allowed to keep killing whales for scientific purposes. Like fish, whales are difficult to count when moving, so the Japanese whalers seem to have made the logical leap in deciding they'd better kill the whales first to stop them moving and they wouldn't make any mistakes. Last year, they're pretty confident they killed and counted 679 whales. The Japanese then decided it would be a shame to let all the whales go to waste, so they might as well eat them. My fixer Mai took me to my first whale meat restaurant. Oh, this is fabulous. We'd like some uh, whale meat, please. The sort of selection, selection box of... Thanks. Thank you. Hi. Well, hi, that means yes. Yes. I mean, I'm not telling you what it means. I'm just, uh, that was me asking you what it means. 
It was time for my first taste of that almost extinct, warm-blooded, air-breathing, whale song singing, baby nursing, sleeps with one eye open food, the whale. Oh, oh lovely. Mm. Well, me stew. Oh, it's lovely. Here we go, deep fried whale meat. Now, some people might think eating whale meat is disgusting, but to me, it seemed better than it going to waste. That is lovely. That, mm. <laughs> lovely, isn't it? The problem was, not everyone was thinking like me. Hidden somewhere in Japan was a massive stockpile of whales that had been counted and were now dead, but were in danger of going to waste because these days only 1% of the Japanese actually eat whale meat. That means there's 3,000 tonnes of it. That's 12 Olympic-sized swimming pools worth sitting around unused. If I could get my hands on that whale meat, I could help stop us having to live in a world without seafood. The question was, are whales a disgusting food that we'll never be prepared to stomach? I'd already done some research, and that obviously involved going to Wales. Excuse me, lads, we're, uh, we're filming for a BBC documentary about food, and we're asking people for their views about, uh, about whales. Uh, well, uh, the, uh, the, the sea-bound mammal, the, like oh, whale, whale meat. Sorry, yeah, I was really, just... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Would you consider eating whale meat? No, not particularly. No. Why not then? Why wouldn't you? Aren't they like an endangered species? I think the ways that whales get caught and like killed and stuff puts me off a little bit. It doesn't seem very humane, to be honest. Right. So personally, I wouldn't eat whale meat. Even if it was cheap? <laughs> no. <laughs> Actually, you're talking about higher order mammals, so I probably wouldn't. But for the consciousness thing, I guess people are. What, what do you mean by that? Explain. Well, there are levels of mammal, aren't there? And there are dolphins and uh, whales are the higher order. Yeah. So the intelligence would make them more subject to ethical consideration. Would you... Would I eat Would blubber? you try whale meat? Depends. I don't know if... If it was in a restaurant... Yeah. ..then I might try it. Is, yeah, there, is there a difference? I don't get this whole sort of, you know, uh, I'm, I'm all right eating this animal, but I'm not all right eating that animal. And, like, yeah. I don't think it's particularly cool. Well, apparently, what they do is they have these uh, harpoon, harpoons with grenades in them. <laughs> and they... And they kind of, you know, the, 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 <laughs> the, the ships, the ships going up and down, they and shoot it in, goes the down whale. in the middle of, of the whale and explodes inside, but it doesn't necessarily die immediately. Whales seem to prove that getting us to eat whales might be problematic. Luckily, from my years investigating disgusting food, I knew a way around it. The secret all good food manufacturers use to get people to eat food they don't really want to eat is to mash it up and disguise it. I needed to master the ancient Japanese art of surimi, the art behind surimi prawns and crab sticks. Right, so I've got me surimi prawns. Look at them. They're massive, aren't they? So I'm going to try and uh, see if I can create something like this and maybe even more realistic get it looking a little bit more like the genuine prawns. I've got all of some Pollock fillets. Now, I've finally chopped it, so washing in counterflow fresh water. And I believe that that's designed to get rid of the strong taste of the original fresh fillet of fish. This is not how they do it in the factory. They don't actually use hands. But I have washed my hands before I did it, so it's, you know, it should be all right. To my tasteless minced fish, I had to add some shrimp paste. Oh, jeez! To put some taste back in. That is raw surimi, the base product from which all other animals can be created with a fishy flavour. Doesn't look like a prawn at the moment, but that's because we haven't put it in the shape. It's only the shape that's wrong. Get a nice curve on it, that. Okay, that's good. Yeah, let's see, let's see, let's just get... I think there's... Yeah, OK. I'll tell you what, I'm going to do, like, a line along the back to suggest the spine. Voila! Now, if that doesn't look like a prawn, then I don't know what does. With my newfound surimi skills, I was confident I could turn the Japanese whale stockpile into a new seafood product for Britain. Mai had sorted out a meeting with the Japanese Whaling Association who represent the people who had killed and counted the whales. Before we went in, she wanted a word. 
they don't know you are a funny person and um, I'm sure they're expecting a very serious one because especially you're from the BBC, yeah. they're prepared for that. Right. So when you go inside, try to be as sort of like...